And one more video. This one will be about the Re Militari. Uh, it's a Latin book. It's a book used in Rome about military strategy. Uh, it's considered the Sun Tzu of the West. So in ancient uh, China, they had Sun Tzu and the Romans had this book. Uh, it's worth noting that it wasn't a book that was used uh, when Julius Caesar was alive. It was more like a compilation made by uh, Flavius Vegetius when uh, all the glory of Rome had already passed. So the idea was that uh, the troops were weaker, um, the foreigners were in the Roman army uh, doing most of the, of the bulk uh, of the army and the, and the tasks of the army. So uh, Vegetius was trying to make um, everything go back to the way it was. So he started um, checking different texts, um, talking to different people, different historians, uh, different uh, checking different books. And he came up with a summary of uh, the main things that the Roman army was doing when, uh, when Rome was at its peak. So he talks about the glories of the past, 200, 300 years ago, uh, how soldiers were training, how sieges were conducted, how maritime warfare was uh, done. Uh, how the preparations were, the types of armor, um, and it's a very practical book. Once you start reading the book, um, you get the feeling that uh, this is the real deal, like this is how war was conducted in, uh, in, in the Roman times of, of in ancient Rome. But uh, we also need to consider that uh, this book was uh, used in medieval Europe, uh, in the Dark Ages, when there wasn't as much knowledge to go around, uh, the Goths, uh, the Visigoths, uh, all the tribes that took over after Rome fell, uh, they didn't really know how to conduct siege warfares, how to build siege towers. So the type of models of siege towers that we see in uh, an army from 942 in the middle of Europe those are the same designs or designs are very similar to the ones that the Romans were using. That's why this is an essential book to, to check, to read, to have, uh, because not only does it talk about Roman times and how Romans did things, it's worth considering that the Romans were adapting things that were um, already performed by other peoples, as well as um, the concepts of the Romans being taken into consideration, being applied by different armies in medieval times. So there was a, um, uh, some sort of uh, saying in medieval times that um, as soon as somebody read uh, Vegetius, he considered himself to be uh, a military genius because uh, a person could roughly organize an army, a siege, to know more or less how to do things. So it's very well explained. It's, uh, it has some sort of pedagogical um, approach to it because Vegetius wanted uh, his, um, uh, his master to, to check the book and to apply this. So everything is explained uh, as you would a child. Um, it's a very interesting book, but there is a problem. Uh, the problem is that for whatever reason, uh, the three versions out there will be missing one part of the book. Like 25% of the book is usually lost uh, in three uh, versions. The, the, the reason for this is that um, they took away siege warfare and naval warfare which is somehow strange, but uh, as they explain in the free version in, uh, in different uh, platforms, uh, they took away this part because it's, uh, according to them, only interesting to historians. And uh, I disagree. I was looking for a version that had all the parts because um, I'm just interested in knowing about these parts as well. I don't see why somebody would just cut a part of the book. The book is not particularly, particularly long. Uh, and it's a very interesting part, like chapter four, the one that is usually missing. Uh, it's uh, quite interesting. It has a lot of words, of course, that are specific to uh, those ancient ships. 
but if you can pass through those words, uh, it's quite interesting to know how war was conducted at sea or how a very strong city would surrender when an army encircled it. Um, so I don't know if, uh, if I would accept a version of a book that has only 75% of the book. I need 100%. And that's exactly what I bring you here. Uh, I don't remember uh, the publishing house of this book. Uh, you have it there somewhere. But it's the one that has the complete, uh, the, the complete book of uh, the Re Militari. And uh, it's quite interesting to read the whole thing. So um, it's okay to check the, the free versions or the incomplete versions. Uh, I wouldn't go with the academic version by... Um, I don't remember if it was Oxford or Cambridge. They have an academic version. Every three lines they stop to make a footnote about some word and to give their theories and to give their input on the on what we just read. Uh, some pages, I kid you not, have more footnote than text. Like you would see three or four lines of text and the rest of the page would be a footnote. Uh, and I think that's ridiculous. I think that's uh, that's that's missing the point of I, I don't want to read um, such a such a huge amount of footnotes so i prefer this uh, official version official versions are usually um used because they don't contain as much uh, gibberish and uh, it's it's going to the point it doesn't have footnotes doesn't have prologues or opinions or some guy talking about uh, his impressions on the book and that's also what I try to do uh, on the channel. I try to just um, point you in the right direction for the books, but I'm not going to give you my opinion of uh, of any of the parts of the book. So, yeah, um, the Re Militari is one of those things that I can't get tired of recommending enough. It's, uh, it's of historical importance, military importance, and if you haven't read it yet, you would uh, do very well to, to read it. And if you already uh, read the book, make sure that you don't miss the, the fourth part, the, the one about naval warfare and siege warfare. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching.